Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be kind of a two in one video. So I really wanted to bring back um, a few of the sides of my makeup look. I did a few last year and people seem to really enjoy them. Um, and I asked uh, Lena Loves Green, um, she's a green beauty Instagrammer, if she would like to um, decide my makeup look. And she actually asked if I could recreate Lisa Eldridge's um, ultimate all occasion makeup but using all green beauty products so this is where the turn one comes in because I have been asked before to follow along to Elisa Aldridge tutorial so you know those kind of videos that did trend where someone follows along to another beauty person's video so it's kind of a two in one but like I said all the products I'm changing so they're going to be green beauty so I have actually um, watched the video already just to find pick out the right shades and things that I need for it and actually what I quite like about this video um, is that she doesn't focus on the actual kind of brand that she's using necessarily she kind of, or the product, she just talks about the different shades for eyeshadows you need to go for depending on your skin tone so, although so that is what I'm going to be doing today now I know with these videos people do have somehow have it on the screen of the video they follow along to I'm not sure if I know how to do that but luckily I've got tomorrow off so I can spend the day trying to work it out and we'll see what happens. If not I will just have to link the video down below for you to go and check out and I'll just follow along to the video myself. I don't know. I'm not that technically brilliant so um, yeah here we go. Of all of the pictures I posted on my Instagram recently of new work, new editorial work, there was one look that has had more tutorial requests than any other. And it's not the most colourful, but when I looked at it I thought I can see why, because it's definitely the most universally beautifying. I've done that look on all skin types, all ages. I've done it for day looks for people, I've used that look for the red carpet when somebody wants something that's classic and not, you know, too over the top. And I almost feel like it's the sort of ultimate makeup look for any age, any occasion and any skin tone. So, so I've already done my base, I'm kind of working on my base, I have to tell you. Okay, so she's already done, so like this is like an all round makeup look for everyone to wear, your skin tone, your age, everyone can wear this look and it's classic so I'm excited. Now like she said she has got her base part already done so I'm going to quickly go ahead and do that and she uses a liquid foundation so I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to first of all go and take my Scent Pure Luminous Primer like I always do. And then foundation, I'm going to take my Pure Liquid Foundation in cream and this can be kind of a day and evening foundation I by no means would I say it's full coverage in my opinion because my spots still show through but you can definitely give a nice light sheer coverage with it and you can definitely build up to more medium coverage so depending on like she said where you want it for a day or an evening look it's kind of up to you so I'm going to go like an in between I guess kind of medium-ish coverage and I'm going to use my expert face brush from techniques as always Seems to be my go-to foundation brush at the moment. I'm just general brush. And I'm just going to start working this into the skin. I'm going to start off with the relatively light like coverage, uh, light layer, and build up where I need to. As you see, my skin's quite bad today for some reason. I've started doing my base for your own protection. So just do your base however you would normally, um, depending on whether it's a day or an evening look you want to use this look for. For concealer, I'm going to use the Hydra Life, and this is the illuminating one underneath my... Okay, so for concealer, I'm going to use my Vapor um, Illusionist Conceal 010. This is a sample I got a while ago, and it's still kind of going strong. I think it's almost on its way out. There's still a bit in the lid and still a little bit in the pan. But that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to take it on my, I don't know how this happened, but I've kind of bent my deluxe concealer brush from your techniques. But that's the brush I'm going to use to apply this where I need it. Um, concealer, so something that's quite creamy. You just pat into the skin, into the area. Mainly where you're dark. And it's just very 
nice and light, but it does a really nice job. And now I'm doing pinpoint concealing, just anywhere that you need extra coverage. I'm using the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage, just to cover any blemishes or any scars. I'm going to stick with the same concealer for my kind of uh, blemishes area. So I'll see it all over my chin. So while we're still on the wet side of the makeup, so still use, doing the base with liquid products, I'm just applying here Eclat Miracle, which is the highlighter. I like this one because it's good on lots of different skin tones because it's very, very transparent. Because um, some of them are a bit white. Okay, so I'm going to go with the cream highlighter and I'm going to take the uh, Vapor Organics Halo Illuminator in Moonlight. Um, it's kind of a more pinky toned highlight. I know she's gone for more transparent, but I don't, apart from my um, Luminizer Quad from. RMS, which is a bit more, I think it's a bit too wet for what she was going for because that's very glossy. This is going to give a better finish, I think. And she only takes it on the cheekbones. Obviously, choose one that really works best with your skin tone because you want it to look natural and blend into the skin. So if you prefer to use cream blusher, then you should use that now. Um, I'm going to use a powder blusher to create this look, so I'm going to now powder my skin. I'm just going to powder it really lightly though, around the teeth. Okay, so I'm going to set as well, and she kind of sets the exact same areas I usually set. So my T-zone and anywhere I've put concealer. I'm just going to... I seem to have misplaced my unpowder from RMS Beauty. So I'm just going to go in my PH1 from here, just on my Real Technique setting brush. Go ahead and set those areas. Urban Decay Primer Potion, just lightly over my eyelids. Okay, so I don't have a Green Beauty Eye Primer. I have actually had a request um, for someone who is looking for um, a really good Green Beauty Eye Primer, so I am going to have a little look try and find a few and kind of do first impressions and compare them and stuff like that but for now I'm just going to do the method I always use where I pop a little bit of concealer over my eyes and then just set it slightly with some powder. This in this look was just really about a natural sculpted eye. It wasn't particularly about anything super colourful or dramatic, it was about just beautifying the eye make they all tend to have a light colour which you can use as a base, a medium colour that you can use to shade, and then a darker colour that you can use for extra sculpting or for lining, and then a highlighter colour. And the kind of tones would really depend on your natural skin tone. Likewise, if you've got darker skin. So, I mean, I'm just picking up the. Um... Okay, so as you saw, I'm going to be using the Handset Pure Pretty Naked palette. I'll probably dip into the Naked 2 for um, highlighter shade. But what it doesn't have is kind of the base colour that she's using. So she's using, like she said, quite a warm skin tone or colour, like this one here from the Lily Lolo Smoke and Mirrors palette. <coughs> Which actually would be a great palette to use for this. And maybe I should. But I feel like I did a Lily Lolo kind of tutorial last week almost with the spring look. So I kind of don't want to do it again, use the products overused products. Mm. Actually yeah, maybe I'll stick with this one then because then I can kind of not switching between palettes because obviously I've been using three palettes then so I'm going to stick with this one actually, the Lilo Smoke and Mirrors instead. Um, I pick up that shade which is called Reflection at the end and use this as my base colour and most of the quads have something that's kind of designed to be used as a base. And what you do is you just take that all over the eyelid. And you don't have to pack it on so much that it's, you kind of see, you know, it's, it looks very stark. You don't want that. You just want, so it evens out the skin tone on the eyes, but at the same time you're not looking suddenly really weird and strange. Now I'm actually going to go in with the shade um, Silhouette, which is kind of similar to what she described. But I know she goes in with a lighter mid-tone colour on the lower lash line, which would be um, Myth in this palette. So that's why I want to go in with 
uh, silhouette for this next shade. And then just working that into your natural socket. So it depends. If you've, you've got hooded eyes, you can still do this look. If you've got Asian eyes, you can still do this look. And it's really about just tracing your natural socket because you're sculpting your eye. You're giving the illusion of more depth where there is either no depth or a little bit of depth. And then you're using the lighter colours to really bring those highlights forward, bringing your brow bones forward, bringing your lids forward. So I'm going to use this. I'm, I don't have hooded eyes, but I'd say they're quite heavy, my lids. So I have to do this with my eyes open. And this is certainly how you would do it if you had um, either an Asian eye or a hooded eye. So you just want to map out where roughly that shape is and then clean up your brush and then just blend. Yeah, so like she said, this colour is being used to kind of um, go through the crease, your natural crease, and kind of sculpt and define. So place the colour down and then blend out first with so afterwards with circular motion, sorry. And that is the perfect, the colour I use I think works really well because it does look quite dark in um, the pan but with a light hand it comes out much softer which is why I think it was a great shade to use. Obviously you can use more of a brown shade if you want to, like she said, you kind of find the colours that work for you. And that's what I liked about this tutorial, she kind of, she gives suggestions and advice but doesn't necessarily tell you what products you must use, just kind of recommends the shades for you. So the next element of the makeup is eyeliner and you can either use a pencil or a gel. I used a gel on the model so I'm going to use a black bobby brown gel and it's really about working it into the roots of the lashes to define the eye and this makeup looks great in any kind of photography as well. Okay, with this next step, I don't have a black pencil that's Green Beauty, I don't have a gel liner that's Green Beauty. What I have is a liquid liner, um, which I think is going to be a bit too harsh, harsh for what she wants, for what is going on. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take the black eyeshadow from here, this is the shade Intrigue, on my little pencil brush from Kiko. And kind of, actually no I'm not, I'm going to take it on my detail brush. Real Techniques, it's quite a much smaller, tiny brush, and really work it into the lash line instead because I know later she smokes, she kind of smudges it out so it's not like a, a complete line. And I think the shadow are much better than the liquid liner that I've got, so that's what I'm going to go for. Really nice, defining eye. Just pat along. I think the softer it is, the better, so don't. You almost don't want to draw a really solid line. And then you can use a brush or a Q-tip just to kind of smudge and blend in the edges. When you get to the outer edge and when you, you're finished, just looking ahead into a mirror, we're not going to do a, a wing or anything, but you're just sort of finishing it off. So just a few dabs at the outer corner. So she wanted that softness with it, nothing harsh, and that's why I think eyeshadow is a great way of doing this. I've done it before using a black eyeshadow across the kind of lash line it just really softens it but adds definition as well at the same time so now I'm going to use what would normally be the mid-tone in a, a quad of eyeshadows I'm going to use Suspect and this is just a lighter version of the browny grey colour that I used on the top in the socket yeah, so like I said, um, I knew she was going to do this, so that's why I went with Silhouette first. So then I can go in with um, Myth, Myth, which is a slightly lighter colour, and I'm going to pop this along the lower lash line like she has. Oh, I'm using the Lulu Lolo Tape Blending Brush. I think I use this for the um, Silhouette colour as well. It's a really great um, crease brush and kind of just a general diffuse brush as well. So it's just a softer thing because I'm not doing a smoky eye. I'm just doing a sort of naturally defined eye. I'm going to finish off with the lightest shade. So if you're using a quad, this is... Unfortunately, in this pa um, 
this palette, it doesn't have the kind of highlighting shade she's using for her brow bone. Um, the next shimmer, obviously the one I used first, um, Reflections and Matte base colour. This one, which would be the next lightest, is Looking Glass, but it's a more peachy shimmer shade, which a shimmer shade is kind of what I need, but not a peach tone. So I am actually going to go into the 100% Pure Naked 2 palette for this and take the highlighter in here, Illusionist. I know I still want to stick with one palette, but that's kind of the one shade it's missing. And I thought it's best to go with two rather than try and mix with three palettes. Like she said, just use, not go too heavy, use a small amount. Just to define the brow bone. One, two, at the inner corner of the eyes. And again, it doesn't have to be super strong. I mean, if you're doing this exact same look for the evening, you can increase it as opposed to during the day. Was eyelash curling. So give a really good curl on the eyelashes. I'm not going to go and use eyelash curlers. I don't... I have got a pair, I don't know where they are, but I don't find, because my eyelashes are naturally quite curled and lifted, um, I don't feel the need to go in with them, but obviously if you've got more kind of straighter eyelashes, or eyelashes not so much of a curl, and you want a bit extra, then obviously you do go in with some eyelash curlers. The DHC mascara mm -hmm. in black, and when you apply your mascara in this look, it's really, really important that you are right down to the roots of the lashes. Because we're doing the ultimate defining and beautifying makeup, we want the majority of the mascara right down at the roots. Otherwise, it doesn't really do anything. If you just put lots of coats on the edge of the end of the lashes, it doesn't help to define them at all. Uh, as you saw, I'm using the uh, PHB Ethical Beauty Mascara. So really, like she says, defining the lash line, the root of the lashes, and then adding the rest of the length of the lashes. Right at the roots. For brows, you want a really nice defined brow. So I'm just going to brush them down there and using the Suku Brow Powder Palette. It's actually the brush that comes with it, but it's really nice. So I'm going to go with my Lily Lolo Eyebrow Duo in the shade Dark. Now she brushes her eyebrows down first and then fills them in. The only spoolie I've got is on the end of my e.l.f. brow. So I'm just going to use that to brush them down first. And then start filling them in. It's all about having a real nice arch. And then once you have that, you can work on either extending the length, then you have less on the brush so it wouldn't be as harsh and filling in any gaps you had there. So just a nice polished and defined brow. So next, next stage of this makeup will be a little bit of sculpting. I'm using a powder sculptor which is why I'm using it now when, once I've done my powdering. So I'm just going to gently run that along under my cheekbones. I have so I'm going to go in with the Lily Lolo Sculpt and Glow Contour Duo. I have not contoured for a while, so I'm taking off the sculpting side and sculpting my cheekbones. I'm going to use my contour brush from Real Techniques to do this. I've got a video actually all about, just about um, contouring, so if you want to have a look at that, it's much more in depth. And on top of that, apply blush. This is one by... Mm -hmm. Old Yours's. Okay, so she only does the cheekbone area. That's quite a diffused out contour. I think I've gone a lot heavy. You know what, I'm going to take my foundation brush and just slightly diffuse that out because I think I've gone... Hers is quite diffused and not intense and I just feel like I've gone a bit heavy there. So we're on to blush, she said. Rimmel. So I'm going to use my Unscent Pure Fruit Pigmented Blush in Healthy for this and obviously use my Luxie 504 as I always do to apply this. Just sort of keep that again in a quite gentle shape so on top of the contour 
just work it up towards the apple of the cheek and then gently taken out. And you can also bring it up a little bit in a really gentle C shape. And I think in terms of colour, just your whatever's your sort of natural colour you use whenever you're doing a sort of natural makeup look. So not too dramatic on the blush. So on to lips. I'm going to use a lip pencil. Quite a natural colour, so whichever colour is closest to your natural lips. So for me I would just go a little tiny bit deeper than this, maybe slightly less blue. If your lips are naturally quite blue, then just warm them up a little bit. This is Okay, so moving on to the lip portion. So like she said, she's gone for a very neutral lip pencil. The only kind of neutral tone lip pencil I own that's Green Beauty is my Lily Lolo in Soft Nude. It's a really nice, kind of one of my go-to everyday uh, nude lip liners anyway. So that's what I'm using for this video. This one by um, Dior. Once you started applying that pencil onto the lips, then use some lip balm. Now, I don't know, I haven't got a Green Beauty lip balm, but I do have this one which I got from Whole, um, Whole Foods, so I know it's more of a natural based lip balm, and it's from Skin and Tonic London, and it's a naked lip balm. Um, so I'm going to go in with this, apply it like she said, and then use that to smudge in the lip liner. And then you can go back in with the pencil and do all your corrections, so... Any corrections you do, you should buff onto the lips as well. And don't forget to pat. And then for lips, on top of this pencil and balm, you can either put a tinted lip balm if you have very dry lips, or you could use a lipstick. And I'm going to use this lipstick, which is quite a good pinky brown colour, so really not much different to the colour that I've already created. And it's very close again to my natural lip colour. Okay, so I'm going to go in my Hanso Pure lipstick for this part in Sandstone because I feel it will match the lip liner the best. I do have Pink Canyon, but I think it's just a bit too pink. And like she said, she kind of wants a brownie pink. Um, this isn't mm, not quite a brownie pink, but I think it will work for what we want. She is using a lip brush to apply this just to give like a light coating. Um, so I'm going to do the same as well. So that's the finished look, and it's a look that can either be dialed down if you want a little bit softer, or dialed up if you prefer a stronger look, or it's, if it's for evening. But I think it's just one of those classic makeup looks that every woman should have in their makeup wardrobe. The only thing you need to be mindful of is the shades you choose. Obviously, you want shades that suit your skin tone. And if you go to shops like Inglot or MAC, they can actually help you to create your own custom palette so you can spend time and find the four shades that will help you to achieve this look exactly for your skin tone. And... Um, Likewise, in terms of the shape of your eyes, for example, the shape of your face, it can all be adapted. But um, it's definitely worth learning. It's a classic. It never goes out of fashion. And um, it's great for all ages as well. The makeup look complete, following on to Lisa Aldridge's makeup store using all Green Beauty products. I really like her tag. It is a very beautiful kind of classic look for everyone isn't it it just looks really nice on the eyes like so you can tailor it so you can go bolder if you want to so like dark colors if you're more for evening or however but i really like how the eyes turn out you can definitely i think the level i've gone is kind of if you're doing something in the day um i think it definitely can be toned up for an evening i think i could definitely tone it down for a more basic day look but i really like how it turned out and very much to Lena Loves Green for requesting this because it's a really nice look and now that I've kind of I learnt it, it's kind of definitely one I can use in the future again, whether it's on myself or potential clients, I don't know. I have to say Lisa Elsha is a very calming voice. Um and she explains things really well without kind of, and she just, like I said, she kind of did mention a few product brand names that she was using, but she didn't kind of like, I feel, force them onto you to use. She kind of just more, um, 
explained about the shades you need and the technique and stuff and I have to say I really really like how this turned out it's a very beautiful look so like I said we'll see if I can manage to pop up the video on the screen for you to watch along to like me I don't know how it's going to work but we'll see so I hope you enjoy this video thank you so much for watching oh and if you'd like to decide my next makeup look then obviously leave a comment down below and yeah I'll see you in my next video